Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to That One Goosebumps Podcast. Halloween edition. <laughs> Tonight we're going to be reviewing Sorry. Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. Jack-O-Lanterns. Look at that dirty reprint that Wasaki has. Book number <laughs> Yes, book number 48. So while we're here... Brandon, you want to give us a quick rundown about Jack O' Lanterns and then uh, your Reviewer Beware can kind of fill us in on the plot? Okay, so there is a kid named Drew Brackman. Halloween's their favorite holiday. Um, so they're going trick or treating and pretty much they find these guys that are wearing pumpkin heads and they keep telling them to keep getting um, Halloween candy. Otherwise, you know, they're going to burn their face off or some stupid junk like that. <laughs> Review beware, will you take it away, Slappy? <laughs> well, I mean, the better go off of that, basically, Drew and her best friend Walker want to prank Tabby and Lee because for years, um, they have been pranked on Halloween, and then the year after, they had a chance to get their revenge, it didn't work. So they're trying to figure out how they can cook up some revenge. And, uh... That's when the jack lanterns get involved, but the thing seems rather terrifying about this. So I'm just going to start off by saying one thing. Yes. There are a lot of Goosebumps books that start off good and have a good setup and then crash late. Agreed. This book is the opposite. Why do I say that? This book's start is rather slow, and it it's bogged down by a bunch of, like, overabundance of exposition. Yes. And it kind of, like, needlessly tries to throw in two years of backstory when it could have just needed one. Yeah. The book, the book actually struggles out of the gate. Yeah. The 90s. This book got hot. And it never... Stop once it heated up. Yeah, once it picked up the plot, yeah. it really just kind of ran with it. But, right. you know, that's, that's, that's a goosebumps trope a lot of books share. Either they have a trouble picking up or they have trouble ending. The idea is there, but a lot of the times it's a struggle to get to the idea. I'd yeah. rather have a book that struggles early and finishes strong. I will say, this book gave me a lot of, like, aesthetics related to, like, Halloween time. Yeah. Yeah. This book is strange because I wouldn't say the actual, like, writing was amazing, except this was a period of time where Arl Stein was just coming off of what I consider to be a slump. I felt like he really enjoyed writing this book. And a lot of people, like, get mad. They're like, this book is kind of ridiculous. It's like, of course it is. It's written by Arl Stein on a Halloween about pumpkin heads. I think there's people who rip on this book and take it way too seriously. The book doesn't even take itself seriously. It's, it's not really done, and the twist is just hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Aliens. Slappy, you're scaring me. You're staring right into my soul, dog. <laughs> Like you won't stand right into your soul one second. Oh god, here we go. Real quick, as everyone notices... Oh, that's we... for staring into your soul. So, real quick, we're all dressed up for Halloween. I mean, it's pretty obvious what uh, Reviewer Beware is. Brandon, what are you? I'm supposed to be a zombie scientist. Oh, I got a spider here. I got the zombie head here. Yeah, I don't know looking how good. Can see that. Nope, looking good. Josh? Are you cooler, Josh? What are we looking at here? Oh, a you're a janitor. Okay. Josh is no, here to clean up. No, no, no. I'm a hardcore Slytherin student. I see. Aren't you already a Slytherin? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to play for Halloween, though. So that's what I'm going to be. Ah. See, I was going to do one of these, baby, but they're hard to breathe in. All right. And does everybody know what I am? Because I don't know if it does uh, clear picture. You're a god right now. Uh, I'm Joe Biden. I'm a skeleton. Oh! Um, yes. Thank you. Let's talk about something you liked about the book. Starting with Wasaki, what's one thing you liked about Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns? Um, for me, personally, what I liked about Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, I really did like the overarching story. Brandon, uh, what's one thing you liked about it? I liked, uh... 
I really um, like the twist ending at the end of the book. I always thought the alien part was really cool. But the other thing is just the fact that they make them get so much candy. It's just insane. Uh, Slappy, what's one thing you liked about the book? Well, I had to point out what I really like. I feel like this is one of those books in the second half of the series where Arnold's trying to put a lot of like energy and imagination to the scares. Like, as Brian was mentioning, I like the part where basically it's like making them run around almost eat candy into being sick. I uh, thought the four missing people like throwing was really interesting. Um, this entire book with Arl Stein dunking on everybody. I don't know. I feel like I, I like the little the zany like eccentricness of this book. It feels like Arl Stein had fun with this one. For me, I would say Halloween gives me a boner. So, uh, anything Halloween related, I mean, Goosebumps is already spooky. The fact that we got a Halloween-based Goosebumps book, besides Haunted Mask, was just like, yeah. So. Hey, here's the thing. I feel like this is the yeah. essential Halloween book. Like, I agree. Saying, oh, no, Mask. Haunted Mask is the best Goosebumps book. But this is the, this is the Halloween book. Like, I'm going to take it more seriously. This book is Halloween cheese. Yes. This is like the quintessential Halloween cheese Goosebumps book. And I love it. I really do. Okay, uh, let's talk yeah, about a dislike. Right. Let's start with uh, Joshua Saki, and what's one thing you didn't like? About the book, um, I don't like particularly the ending for one for one scene, for one thing. The ending, I would think, personally, after the, uh, you know, the best friend, the other guy, the other guy that... Walker. Him, it's Walker. He finds out that, you know, Walker, when Walker finds out that her, that the pumpkin guys were uh, her friends, and, and turns out they were like, going to the same school. Wouldn't that make Drew a fucking alien? So why the hell are you like, like you're not gonna hang no, out with anyone? Like, it's not. Like, that's part of the twist. It's. I look at it like this. Like, the first part of the twist, mind me going off a tangent, is it's Tabby and Lee getting dunked on. Yeah. And then we, as the readers, get dunked on. We find out they know they're aliens. And then yeah. Drew and Walker get dunked on because they find out that their friend Sam Sean eat the four missing people. Yeah. Because Arnold Stein is dunked on everybody. Facts. Brandon? It's, a, it's, it's like a giant got him twist. Yeah, it's just one of these. Yeah. Going it around. Yeah. But this entire book is but one of those that's forgivable for a variety of reasons because it's so fun. Mm -hmm. The only is I would just put it as I'm not the candy at that point. They said, "Oh yeah, don't know the candy. Go we'll get your next meal for next Halloween." Yeah, don't worry. Let's go to our house and get home. Yeah. Mar has it. Brandon, what's one thing? What's one I thing you disliked? Completely gonna be honest. The slow start. I actually remember the first time I read the book back in fourth grade. I think it was. I literally passed out when I read it. Because oh. <laughs> I read it in school. And I passed out during nap time. I was supposed to be sleeping, but I read the book and fell and went to pass out. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, slappy? I'm trying to book Well, uh, I went with Brandon. This book's start was definitely nothing unforgivable, but it feels like it was like an overabundance of exposition. They could have definitely chopped out a decent amount of it. This book... Yeah, this book just started to slow. It, it kind of found its footing later. Mm -hmm. I agree. I just wish there were more Jack and Lanterns, honestly. I mean, I definitely enjoy the fact that, like, they are tied into the plot, but I guess I was just maybe hoping for something different. And again, this is not complaining at all. The only thing I don't like is the cover's misleading. I would have been more interested if they went to an entire, like, town full of Jack and Lanterns and they all started kind of coming after them, like, 1950s monster oh, horror okay. flick. I was yeah. going to say my idea was, like, what I, what I always thought was the entire town was the jack-o'-lanterns, hence why the parents kept giving them the candy. Yeah. To keep eating them on. Yeah. You know, that's but, what I always thought, but, you know, I gotcha. I'm not complaining, though. So. <laughs> so, can we all agree that this should have been a sequel? Yes. Yes, it should have been, exactly. How would they have done it? Well, it's funny you ask that, and if you wait until my series finally gets to it, I'll tell you when I make the sequel. <laughs> Goosebumps Beyond! I can't wait for it, buddy! Sad promotion! It takes yeah. a long time. Question. I'd put it. Huh? Question. 
Uh, you're going to make a nice and gummy 1.5 to explain why there's a sandwich up in the sloppy nose. Nope. Here? Listen. No, you're not? Listen. All of these look like the mom's work for. Yeah, there you go. So, anyway, let's rate the book, guys. Uh, let's start with Slappy. What is your rating? This is tough because the good parts probably deserve a higher rating, as but the book struggled about the games. I'm giving the book, I'm going to go with an eight and a half out of ten. That is fair. Why, yeah. Saki, what are you rating this thing? Buckiest radius, I'm giving it a, a six out of ten. Six out of ten, okay. Brandon, Undead Doctor Man, what do you have for us? Nine out of ten. Swag. Um, seven point five out of ten. So let me just average that real quick, and we'll go from there. Tell us a fun fact about the book. Um, it was made in nineteen ninety six, which is the same year Super Mario sixty four came out. Oh yeah. Um, the classic edition, I had to take out the line where Arl's trying to scratch someone's a black kid who struts and stuff like the hip hop rappers because, yeah. Raffle. <laughs> Alright, got our rating, guys. This book scored a whopping 7.75 once rounded. This book is not bad, score, but. Not for a Goosebumps, right. that's a solid score. Like, this is no disrespect to the book. The episode is a. Banger, man. Yeah. One of the best episodes in the series. Oh my oh god. god. Amazing. They went hard on the effects. The twist ended up being real funny. I like that they had that walker who didn't tell. Yeah. Yeah. That's the episode I'm I'm not yeah. This episode gets a ten. I'm not gonna lie. Right. The dream scene that um Drew has scared the shit scared the shit out of me a little bit. Give me your costumes upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, weird. That's, I was like, what the hell? Stranger danger! Yeah. <laughs> the highest level is being almost clear. Brandon, what would you rate this episode? Okay, so I just recently just got done watching it. So, I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I have a little bit more nostalgia towards my mask, so I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Josh Wysocki. Give us a spell. At your rating, I'm giving this a nine. Solid nine, right in the middle. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with the nine as well. So, is that fucking so are we all in agreement the episode gets is just a little better? Yeah, it encompasses the feel better. The episode was just so good. Yeah. The episode was amazing. What'd you say? I don't know. The episode know. is definitely up there with War of Skin. And the best, like, special effects of that episode. Okay, if we're trying to talk books... The episode that I read the books, Shock Street's episode is. I'm talking about the episode. Yes. Of the world skin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, Shock Street. I, I had a big budget. Hey, stop, s- stop, dick riding werewolf skin. We'll get to that book when the time comes. Our next book. Yeah. Okay, so if you guys notice, in the last podcast we agreed upon haunted school, but we are too close to Halloween to review a fucking school book, so we decided Attack of the Jack. Haunted School's coming at you next week. So there's that. Any channel announcements, starting with Slappy? Uh, you'll be seeing this soon, or put your next couple episodes of stuff. We just got to edit. I'm making a huge comeback. It's taking a while to find a place to film, but you know. Yeah. Brandon, channel announcement? Okay, actually a couple of things. I ordered the Monster Jam Halloween truck. This is the World Finals truck. But, uh, I ordered the Halloween truck. I'm going to be unboxing that. I actually have a haunted mask review coming soon that I did not tell anyone in this group chat about. And now we know. TV. And then on top of that, I also have a couple of other miscellaneous videos that I'm going to be recording. So cool. Waisaki, tell us about your next anime review. I'm actually going to be doing a TV show review on the Soko Freak Down, which is oh. a Netflix show kind of like and I'll be afraid of the dark. And I will be also be doing soon, I have an old talking box coming soon. The fuck? So I'll be doing an unboxing for that. Of what? What is it? An anime box. Okay, like sorry. Anime. Some of us speak English. Box, okay. anime. Okay. I'll be with her to weep joke here because he's mean. Wow. <laughs> you know me. Yeah. So, for my channel, you guys know how to change my name, Bumps in the Night. I have spent a lot of time <laughs> writing my own... Ad- 
I guess it's a fan fit. I don't know what the hell it's called, but it, I did a Goosebump story. Return to Dead House. I took all the crew of the Horror Burrito, I dropped them in the bodies of 12 year olds, and we are going to Dark Falls. Yo! Look forward to that by Halloween. Yes. Yeah. All right, so this has been that one Goosebumps podcast, and happy Halloween. Don't eat all your candy, or you'll be eaten by a jack-o'-lantern. More houses! Buy more houses! Hey, everybody. Bumps in the Night here. Just wanted to thank you for watching our show. If you enjoy Goosebumps, you should smash that subscribe button. If you enjoy this form of podcast, you should check out our other podcast we have. It's called The Whore Burrito. Lastly, I'll leave you with this. Just remember, you never know what goes bump in the night. Yeah.